Okay, now let's talk about creep. What is creep? Well, creep is a very interesting thing. It's a very interesting thing. What happens is that creep is when at elevated temperatures, your strain will change, even if you have a constant stress. So like something will continue to stretch, even though you're not doing anything. I'm not pulling any harder, but at elevated temperatures, it's going to stretch anyway. And you don't have to change your stress. You can keep the same constant stress and it will continue to stretch. Um, now this usually occurs at elevated temperatures. So it's about, you know, it's not the melting point, but it's about a little bit less than half the melting point in Kelvin. And then you're getting close to that creep point. Below that, you apply stress, the strain will be constant. You know, it's not going to change. Above that temperature, that's when you begin to have issues. Now, this right here, this is called creep strain. And we can see that to begin with, nothing happens. Um, this is the instantaneous deformation from that load. And then as we increase that temperature up to this, finally stuff's going to start happening. So this is like as soon as we reach that temperature, this is what begins. Now, first off, there's three stages to our creep. There's primary creep, which you can see it kind of slows down with time. So it increased pretty quickly and then it kind of slowed down. There's secondary creep, which is fairly steady state. And there's tertiary creep, which is when you're going towards failure and it's an increasing rate of um, creep. And we're just talking about creep. Creep is just strain. It's just an increasing strain that doesn't cause, come because I'm increasing the force. It's only because the temperature is fairly hot. Now creep is very temperature dependent. The hotter it is, the hotter it is or the higher the stress, the more creep strain you're going to get. So you can see right here that if I'm at a fairly low temperature, a fairly low temperature, well, you know, it's going to take a long time before it's going to get to failure, if at all. This one right here, though, as we increase the temperature or we increase the stress, either one, well, you can see that now it's taking, you know, there's a finite number of amount of time before it finally fails. And over here, it's less time. And here, it's less time. Each time, the strain increases. You can also see that the amount of strain is different. Because either I have a hard, higher stress or a higher temperature. Temperature gives mobility. It lets those atoms move out of the way more easily. However, and it will also lead to failure more quickly. So let's talk about that steady state creep rate. That is this area right here. That's the dotted line. That's what we're going to talk about next. And it is constant for a constant temperature and stress. Of course, if you change the stress or the temperature, it's going to change as well. What's going on at this point is that strain hardening is being balanced by recovery. Okay. The temperature is causing it to recover and become less hard. And as you strain it, it is becoming harder because you're straining it. You're adding plastic deformation. And so both of those are balancing each other out. That's why you have that steady state rate. There's actually a nice little equation for this. A nice little equation. And once again, yes, another K. This is the material constant for this. Um, this is the material parameter and this is the material parameter. So we have three. We have a constant, we have the stress exponent, and the activation energy for creep. So you need to know all three of these. And normally at least two of them are going to be given. You'll probably have to solve for the third in most problems. So what we can see here is that our steady to state creep rate, that's how much we're straining per time, in this case is as a percent per 1,000 hours, so you can see this is a long time, um, is increasing with temperature or with stress. The higher the stress or the higher the temperature, the higher our creep rate. The higher our creep rate. Okay? So it is going up. So this is the stress. You can see the stress is a very, very large effect. And we have temperature right here. Now, eventually, it's going to lead to rupture. Anything that you stretch, eventually, it's going to run out of volume. It's not going to have anything else to move into place. And so it's going to fail. Um, however, it's impractical to get what this is going to be um, because this might take literally years 
sometimes. Like, you know, it is stretching. This is, this is happening, but it's not necessarily a fast thing under many temperatures. So what we typically do is we extrapolate. We take data collected for a shorter amount of time at a higher temperature, and we define something called a Larson-Miller parameter. So this is a function of the applied stress, depends on what you're doing right there. Um, this would be the time to failure. This is your temperature. And this is a constant that's normally around 20. So with this, you could then say, OK, well, based on a lower temperature, what is my time to failure going to be? Because the Larson-Miller parameter for that particular stress will be constant. It's not going to change. So let's use this example right here and see if we can figure out how long it's going to take this to rupture. So we're estimating the rupture time for a particular type of iron at a temperature of 800 degrees Celsius and a stress of 20,000 PSI. First things first, temperature always absolute, always, always absolute. So 800 plus 273. That comes out to be 1,073 Kelvin. Now we need to figure out what our Larson-Miller parameter is going to be. So we go over from 20,000 PSI, we go down and we see, okay, that's going to be a Larson-Miller parameter of 24. You should be given tables like this. If you're not, then you probably have to figure it out by solving with what it gives you. There will be a way to figure out what the value of M is. So I plug that in. So I've got my stress now. I've got my temperature. I know what my constant is. We just put in 20 because we don't. Um, I'm sorry, I said that was stress. That is my loss miller parameter. Um, we have my constant. We just put in 20 because it's usually around 20. And then we solve. And we get that our time to failure at this temperature would be 233 hours. So that's about 10 days, which might help you understand why buildings, even if they're made of you know non-flammable materials, will fail in a fire. It's because you know, this is a hot temperature. 1,000 Kelvin is very, very hot. And it can get even hotter inside of an inferno. And that hot inferno at a very high stress because maybe the other, you know, um, other supports have given way or there's been debris that's fallen on top of the building. High stress plus very, very elevated temperatures leads to failure more quickly. And so that is why you'll see buildings that, you know, they should be completely you know, solid, but once they catch fire, you got to be careful because those supports might give way due to creep and eventually rupture. Okay, so that's it this time. We finished this chapter. Um, big things to remember are there are different types of fracture. We want the ductile kinds. And there's lots of ways to figure out how to improve our life. Also, there's two other kinds of failure, which are fatigue and creep. One is because of stress fluctuations, the other is because of elevated temperatures. So please avoid all these things and don't fail and do well and keep on being awesome. And I'll see you all next time. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.